A belief in God comes in all kinds of shapes and sizes, and we wanted to ask the question on my new show, The Line, which is on a different channel than this one, this last Sunday, whether or not it might be time to let go of God. And it ended up in a call where there was a bit of an altercation, a scuffle, a debate between myself, Matt Dillahunty, and an Argentinian minister. And I wanted to bring that call to you. I'm Mr. Atheist. Let's do this. We're going to jump into this call in a moment, and I will tell you, you're going to want to watch to the end because the beginning starts out pretty mild and then it gets pretty heated. And you will see that I don't enjoy being intellectually condescended to. You'll also see that I got to fulfill one of my bucket list dreams of before I die, I want to be on a call-in show with Matt Dillahunty and me be the one to hang up on the collar. But right before we jump into it, I do want to make sure that you are aware that I have another channel called The Line, and this is the show called The Line, and the clip you're about to see is from the show The Line. Every Sunday, we'll be doing an atheist kind of call-in show with different featured guests. This week was Matt Dillahunty. Next Sunday will be my good, good friend, Telltale, Owen Morgan from Telltale. He and I are going to take calls and get assessments from people of whether or not they or a family member or uh, just someone they know is in a cult. They'll be able to describe to us this organization that the, this person they know is a part of, and we'll give a ruling on how culty it sounds and what kinds of things you might want to do to help your person, friend, family member, whatever, uh, in that situation. Basically, we'll give the advice as best we can. That's this coming Sunday. Please do go over there and subscribe. And for those of you who don't want to watch an entire 90-minute to two-hour episode, we are going to be, like with this, putting out clips on that as well. So you'll be able to watch the shorter clips from those shows of the topics you specifically want to watch. Anyway, you've waited long enough, so on to the main event. Here is Matt and I debating an Argentinian pastor on why we, in fact, should not let go of God and, in fact, embrace God. I'm glad I'm glad it's you with me on this first uh, one, because apparently next in the queue is an Argentinian minister who would like to argue not to let go of God. If you're ready, okay. I'm ready. Awesome. Let's go. I, I'd love to, to hear a, I have yet in all these years to hear a good reason to not let go of God apart from I personally get comfort for it and I am afraid that I'm not going to get that comfort somewhere else, which is, you know, about as good as I could come up with. Okay. Uh, let's bring him on the line. Aaron, can you hear me okay? Yes, sir. And is it Aaron? Because it's yes, been sir. put in my thing as AA Ron, which might have been a joke from the screener, <laughs> uh, but I don't know. No, no, that was definitely my joke. Right oh, when okay. I got the call, she said, okay, what's your name? And I said, it's AA it's a -A Ron. <laughs> and then I, I've only been asked this by a handful, no, less than a handful of people. She said, okay, how do you spell that? And my girlfriend froze and she goes, really? And I said, you know, I spelled it out for her and I'm evidently she's unaware of the substitute teacher skin. I've been appealing yeah. to that ever since that day. It absolutely kills me every time. Key and Peele is a, it's a really funny show. I, uh, oh, they're amazing. on my recurring lovely. what I watch before I go to bed list. Anyway, you're, Smart you've man. called in Smart to man. argue. I'm glad we could start with this unit unifying message. Now let's, now let's, uh, mm -hmm. diverge. I suppose you've called in to argue that mm -hmm. we should not let go of God. Correct. The floor is yours. It's very simple. Um, uh, I, I, I heard the aforementioned, not really aforementioned, I heard the previous conversation, and I actually agree with the things that were said, all this stuff, and there's a lot of fear-mongering among other things in the church. Uh, that's one of the reasons I actually don't even attend to begin with. I'm actually tired of, you know, the, 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 oh, not just the fear-mongering, but a bunch of other stuff, too. Um, I don't believe that, you know, we need religion to, you know, establish maybe morals or whatever, anything like that. Um, what I do, however, believe is that God has already placed all these things on our hearts, so we don't actually need, for instance, our parents to sit there and tell us, hey, by the way, lying and murder are bad. We shouldn't do those things. It's not necessary because we all know that there's an intrinsic knowledge there. Um, however, absent um, actually God being here, there's really no reason to care who thinks what. Um, because if, you, if he's the one that places it on our hearts, 
um, then absent him, who's to say that me, for instance, going and stealing something is bad? Uh, one of my roommates says that, you know, it's a societal thing and we, you know, form these beliefs and such because of society. But the reality of that is that, okay, well, what when other societies disagree? For instance, the Mayans and Aztecs. Uh, they sure didn't care. They not only kidnapped other tribal members and, and killed them off, yeah. they actually did it to their own people. So to them, cannibalism, well, maybe not cannibalism, but certainly murder, was approved unto God. Um, yeah. So, uh, I mean, you can appeal to, like, governments at large, or you can appeal to societies or something like that. But in the end, it's one entity, whatever that entity may be, against another. So who is ultimately right? And so, so Aaron, I've gotten from just a plethora... Yeah. Matt, you can. I, I had a couple of questions I wanted to clarify on. Um, do you mind if I ask them before I go, Matt? Go ahead. Uh, sure. So, in regards to the, if uh, if our innate knowledge of lying is bad or murdering is bad, if we have that innate knowledge and that is what you're saying is evidence for God writing it on our hearts, wouldn't the human societies and cultures that did murder and lie and steal a lot wouldn't that be evidence against that it's been written on our heart i didn't say this was evidence um i did say these are reasons that uh belief in god is an absolutely crucial critical component to basically even our society um if we want to engage in evidence um I, you know, we could engage in a plethora of things, even including, for instance, like the law of gravity or something, different things like that. Um, okay. I wouldn't argue now, what I meant, the aforementioned details are evidence at all. Okay. So what you started off with saying is you believe that God has put this stuff on our hearts, so we don't necessarily need a religious belief to understand that. Cool. That's, uh, you know, that's like your opinion, dude. Uh, you, you are convinced that God wrote this on our heart, but I would just say that whether God wrote it on our heart or it's an or it's an exercise in empathy, which is a natural process that occurs from a brain that has to cooperate and live in a society, it doesn't make any difference. But every objection that you just made about if there's not God, this will happen, or if there's not God, that, every objection that you made against essentially a potential secular moral system is a real problem that is not in any way solved by your solution. Because in much the same way that two different civilizations could disagree or two different governments could disagree, I can disagree with what you think your God says. So your God is no solution. All all it becomes is you claiming that you have the one and only true absolute solution where you have no way to demonstrate that at all. And by and large, the people who have advocated for divine command theory or God has God is the source of morality don't agree on what morality is, as Jimmy was pointing out, and the problem isn't still isn't solved. So religions have saw, attempted to solve this problem of dissent and disagreement by conversion and coercion and conquest. Whereas what secular humanism is advocating in the process of this disagreement is discussion and debate and data to convince people that we share this goal of whether we want to call it well-being or living a better life. And yes, it's not completely well-defined, but if we can agree on that, then we can begin to look for a process that allows us to determine whether or not a particular action, and we're evaluating the consequences of it, are working to improve our well-being decrease our well-being or keep it the same. So when you when you say, hey, my neighbor might say this is moral and my, my other friend might say this moral, appealing to a God does not solve that. The only way it solves that is if everybody agrees that this is what God wants and we care what God wants. I don't recall saying it would solve something. I did, however, say like- Your whole that point is that good, we need God. Um, yeah, the whole point is that we need God, and that is a reason for that. If you want no, to talk not. about, um, ev- hold on, hold on. I mean, okay, fine. That's not for you, and that's fine. I've spoken to a plethora of people that that think that, and that's great. Um, and they're wrong. The thing is that we don't just great. And I, I can say you're wrong, just like you just established that we can have a disagreement on that. And I'm exactly, fine, I've actually got no problem exactly. With that. I'm, so how great. is it? So, how is it, Aaron? So, Aaron, give me just a second. Aaron, please give me a second. You and I both agree that we could do this all day long. Say, you're wrong. No, you're wrong. No, you're wrong. And there's no way to solve it. So, so how would we solve figuring out, how how would we solve figuring out which one of us is actually right? And the method that you come up with, I think you're going to find 
is the method that the secular humanists are advocating and not the ones that the religious people are advocating. Wrong, because even my family is highly religious, and as I've as we've spoken about different things, even my conversations with a plethora of secular people, we laugh rather comically at the conclusions and the reasonings and so on because of what I'm about to mention. So in all of my personal investigations of this matter, um, I actually basically decided to challenge my own faith because my thought was, if my faith can't stand the scrutiny of any given person on the planet, then what does my faith matter? That basically would be a really good reason to disregard it because it basically, it basically disproves it if we really get down to it. Having done that, it's not just a matter of subjective opinion. I mean, y'all would be right if, if this was just down to what I just said, then yeah, you're right. You, know, you would just say, well, I don't agree with that because of you know, whatever reasons. And that would be the end of discussion. Basically, it would be a, a, a divergence in personal opinion, and that's the, that's the dichotomy that I mentioned a minute ago. You know, one entity against another. Okay, so who's right in an ultimate sense? Well, right. it's very basic. Let's get to the mechanism. Look at the evidence. Yeah, actually, I, um, I want to I take that. So as far as look at the evidence, you said uh, you have your faith that you realize has to be able to survive scrutiny, and it sounds like you were at least implying, oh. so then you went out to look at the evidence to validate your faith. Is that accurate? I don't want to put words in your mouth. It was initially... I, I, I suspect it was initially to validate my faith, and as I went further and further into it, I would encounter questions, and I don't even remember what they were at this point, it's been so long, but I would encounter questions that um, other atheists and other just secular people would ask, and it actually freaked me out because I thought, holy crap, that's not only a really good question, if that good question is not met with a very good substantial quality answer, then that literally would decimate, would eliminate Christianity so, as a potential for a solution or a reason. So your argument, though, is that you have validated your faith, and you're about to share uh, with us some of the mechanisms, but I want to be clear, you have validated your faith, is, is the argument you're making, correct? Yes. Then the, the would you admit you don't sure. have faith? Because how is what is faith when it's validated? It's not faith anymore. Are you using a different definition of faith? If it's validated, I would never call my acceptance of evolution that I have faith in it, but my acceptance of evolution is entirely validated by science and by, by uh, all the mechanisms that I think both of us would agree, I hope both of us would agree, that you go about validating a belief. So if your faith is validated, are you still advocating on behalf of faith, or you're saying you no longer need faith because you, you've gotten past it, you validated all of your faith beliefs? I need faith because my faith in the hope that the resurrection of Christ gives us is the only thing that will actually save us. Having it, if I at that point lack faith just because of the evidence, then what is it that I'm hoping for? It, it wouldn't make sense to continue having faith that Jesus is one day going to return and rebalance everything that was unbalanced following the, in, following, um, the, the entrance and acceptance of sin. So I still have faith. I have faith in Christ. I have faith in that salvation. Uh, but I look at the evidence for that faith that establishes that it's true and it's fact and so on, and said, okay, th this means that the faith is substantial. It stands the test of time and scrutiny and all these things. But it, but it does lack the state of still being active faith, correct? Or are you saying that your faith that Jesus was re resurrected is currently invalidated? Or at least has you failed to validate yeah. it? Not necessarily invalidated, but you haven't validate, validated that. No, I have definitely validated it. Then, do, then you don't have faith, correct? Am I wrong here? I, I'm, do you get what I'm I, saying, right? I, I greatly dis there, um, There's more than... I guess not, because I do not agree. What is your definition of faith? Because I, 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 I will use, when talking to a Christian person, the, I assume that they are talking about Hebrews 11, right? Correct. So once you no longer have to hope for those things unseen, and you've actually validated them as true... Why is it still faith on the other side of it? How is it that I'm no longer hoping for things I haven't seen? Right. I mean, the broader context of the that, Hebrew that, certainly Hebrew isn't definition. literally seen as in you have put your eyes on it. We don't see germs, but we don't say that the belief in germs is faith, unless you do. And maybe that's your broad use of faith. You, you'd have to tell me if so. 
No, as I said, my my faith is in the return of Christ and his equilibrating the world from the unbalance it was put under after the entrance and, and acceptance of sin. Um, I am still I still have faith in his words and for the hope that he brings the world through the gospel. Um, and when his second return comes, that I will be reunited with him in heaven and everything that's bad is gone. I still have faith in that. Okay. Um, but I now have seen evidence that what that his work on Earth and his work in history and literature and other fields um, has now proven his his sixty six book love letter to us. Okay, I, I I think maybe you don't, Matt. You can correct me if I'm wrong because I I can't seem to get uh, get to get him to see what I'm talking about. Did you want to take it from there? Because I am I incorrect that uh, if if it's validated, you don't need faith. That's well, there's mo there's more than one usage for faith. I, I I'm with you in that. To me, faith is the word people use to justify having a belief that they don't have good reason for. He's using two different things. He's basically saying he's validated the resurrection and as you know has a confident, justified belief that uh, God exists. Uh -huh. But he has faith and confidence in what God will do in the future. You know yes. that you uh, yes. so nailed it. And all of this is completely irrelevant to both the question I asked, which is how do we tell which one of us is right, and the issue about morals. Because I could say, I, well, I won't, I won't, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. I sat here and, and waited, and I'm getting ready to blow you out of the water. Because I could agree that you are right, and that there is a God, and I could even agree that what you think God thinks is moral is absolutely correct, and I can say, and I don't give a crap, because the solution, right. it doesn't mean that God is right about a mor morality. So I'm in a position where not only do I not think that there is a God, or that God has told anyone anything about morality, mm -hmm. I also don't think that even if that had happened, that God isn't necessarily correct about morality, and this is why I say that your feeling that we okay. need to appeal to a god as a necessary solution to the problems related to morality is fundamentally obviously demonstrably false because it is no different from appealing to uh, no difference between appealing to a god than it is to appealing to a government than it is to appealing to a parent than it is to appealing any other standard unless people agree on the standard Okay, so do we get into the evidence now? The evidence for what? That validates that scripture is correct as to what it teaches. Uh, about morality? Sure. Please, please explain to me how Exodus 21 is correct in saying that slavery is morally permissible. Okay, that's all Old Testament and much too profound for this discussion. Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> You're not getting out of it that way, buddy. So you're, you're, you're are you no, suggesting that no, 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 no. We're, we're not going to carry on a discussion about something. We're not going to carry on a discussion for something that requires, you know, twenty days of you know eight hours discussion each time. We're not going to do that. It we can engage something. It doesn't require clear. that at all. Yeah. I did an entire video covering it in great detail with all the verses related to slavery in about thirty minutes. But I can do it in much less than that. This is a cowardly way of avoiding something that you know to be immoral in your book. Yeah. Luckily, none, none no. of the three of us no. would need that 20 hours. Okay, well, to actually engage in it and explain it and be thorough about it, that's what's necessary. And I've heard many times input from you, Mr. Matt Dillahunty, and that's what it would require. Um, so, no. And, I mean, you can call it a dodge, a deflection. I don't really care. I no, will. Okay. We need to move on to another issue. I... I Move on to something. Is it is it morally is it is it okay morally correct to force a rapist to marry his rape victim? I put it like this: I'm not going to engage in things that again require 20 days of discussion. I know that's okay. not necessarily required for you. I'm done, but it's much yeah. too dense. Hey, um, uh, anybody who thinks it requires 20 days to answer a simple question that exposes. See, your position here is that God is, is, is necessary for morality. When, when I've already demonstrated that even if God was real and stood right in front of me and said, hey, I think it's morally permissible to force a rapist to marry his rape victim, I can look God in the eye and say, you're wrong.
I, and instead of having any discussion I mean, about been how we can determine and saying he doesn't exist for you know centuries, that doesn't change anything. That I actually it, I, also, it also doesn't mean he's real. I think my suggestion comes down to this, uh, A. A. Ron. Uh, go ahead and make that 20-day series on YouTube. Yeah. Collect your Nobel Prize uh, for proving something that people have never been able to prove. And then let's do the debate again. Uh, and hopefully in that process, you'll become less of an uh, intellectually condescending person. In what way have I been intellectually condescending? We'll see you in three weeks. Hey, I hope you enjoyed that clip. It was one of those ones where after the fact, I thought, oh, why didn't I say X? And one of the things was in all of these these uh, rebuttals that this individual was giving or all these reasons that this individual was giving after he did the whole thing of, listen, your valid point uh, I could respond to, but it would take you three weeks of lessons and education just on this for you even to understand my response. I should have just thrown that back at him. I should have just said, oh, well, I could give you the rebuttals to these points, but I don't have the three weeks to explain all of the things. And the fact of the matter is, is with our backgrounds, Matt nor I are someone who needs a three-week education on something we are already extremely familiar with. It's a dishonest way of saying like, oh, my education and how intelligent I am and all this information I have actually makes this point really easy to refute. Even though if that were true, you would have seen that adopted by the masses, especially as that information got out and people like Matt, who brings up Exodus 21 quite a lot, uh, people like Matt would have been debunked and they certainly would have moved on from an argument that that had been adequately answered for. So you can tell I really, I don't react well to intellectual condescension. I'm going to work on it and get better. I'm sure that I will have to work on it and get better to just not hang up frequently on calls like that that come through to that show. So again, one last reminder, please do go over and subscribe to the line. Hit the subscribe button, ring the bell, watch any clips that you might be interested, though right now, if, you watch, if you're watching this on the day it comes out on my channel, there's probably only the one clip, but watch clips as, as they become interesting to you. And that will also help us to be able to monetize that channel as quickly as possible. And that's kind of important for the amount of work we're putting into it. It's actually like a ton. But as far as this channel goes, thank you all for watching. If you haven't already, hit that subscribe button and find all the ways you can support the channel down below if you so please. Also, like social media and stuff. And let's finish now by thanking the wonderful people who keep my channel alive and going and who I appreciate so much. A special thank you to my Orbital Cosmic Pumpkin Gods, Commander Bork, Sassy Cat, Mabbity Babbity, Ariel, Cat, Cynthia, Contraband, your best friend Allison, YCK, Caleb, and Melissa. Welcome, Melissa. With love, I've been Jimmy Snow. Mr. Atheist was not my father.